Two Player Gun Factory Tycoon is a game in which you start off as a small business making shower curtains for the US military. As you expand production, you become a billionaire in the process, and can now focus on your true goal, developing futuristic technology in an arms race to beat rivaling co- Oh wait, that's Portal. Two Player Gun Factory Tycoon is a game where you team up with a trusted business partner to make extremely irresponsible financial decisions. In this highly realistic depiction of the Industrial Revolution and its consequences, you and your fellow gamers exploit the untapped resource known as the Earth. This includes, but is not limited to, the oceans, third world countries, your backyard, your gaming keyboard. Utilizing the power of friendship and capitalism, you must work together to surpass the six other kids on their mom's iPads. With Gun Factory in the name, you would think that the main objective would be to develop firearms. So, naturally, by the end of the game, you and your partner are constructing portals to alternate dimensions, summoning ancient Roblox technology to walk on air, and calling in airstrikes on new players who can't even make it to the entrance of their base. All while jamming out to electronic music from 2013. Just as the Founding Fathers intended. Upon joining the game, you are greeted with a couple of things. Granted that the server you join isn't vacant, you will likely see at least one factory that's been on the server for the last 8 hours, due to the owners refusing to log off. Right next to it is a base occupied by a wall of guns, with no players in sight. At least they have their priorities straight. You might also see a player who's joined a factory all by themselves, oblivious to the fact that they cannot progress without a teammate. Feel free to help out these players, however, don't get disappointed when they leave the game for no reason, making you the player who joined a factory all by themselves. You may also see the exclusive VIP base, along with one of the rare VIP or fan members. These are the elites of Two Player Gun Factory. They are not to be messed with, as they have probably sunk more hours into this obscure tycoon game than people have spent modding Skyrim. As the title indicates, this is a two-player game, so I wait for my partner to log in, which is actually me because I am very lonely. Your first task is to have you and your partner successfully join a factory, from which you will employ division of labor and delegate tasks to each other. You draft articles of partnership, stating that one of you will be the factory owner, while the other will be the worker. Both of you have role-specific upgrades that only one of you can purchase, where factory owner modules are marked in red, and worker modules are marked in purple. Throughout the course of the game, you'll familiarize yourself with the various upgrades and necessities that come with owning a factory. My Mining drills, conveyor belts, refineries, duplicators, everything apart from actual human labor. Oh wait, nope, we got that one too. Am I making money yet? The upgrade paths are quite linear, with each module in close proximity to the next, and each upgrade costing increasingly more, incentivizing progression cooperation, and the accrual of credit card debt. Begin by using your stimulus check to purchase the starter upgrades such as the conveyor belts and drills, and collect your rewards on the respective money collection pads. Why don't these exist in real life? Feel free to buy the wall upgrades, which are surprisingly cheap, and that's because they will not help you. One of the major rites of passage to any player of this game is to get spawn killed and to have your base constantly raided by a guy who's been on the server for the last four days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he died too! You know that base that you saw at the beginning with no players in sight? Well, they're headed to your base right now, you should probably run. Infiltrating rival bases becomes much easier at the later stages anyway, completely defeating the purpose of walls or any type of security measure aside from dealing with the intruders yourself. Do you feel safe? You shouldn't. I'm in your walls. I can explain this with a metaphor. If you're a small company and you want access to user data, you usually have to pay to get it. However, if your company's big enough, people have to pay to keep you out of their data. That's why this video is brought to you by NordVPN. No, I'm kidding. The next order of business is arming ourselves. You know what they say. Stay strapped or get clapped, my friend. There are two types of playstyles in this game. One may find themselves treading the path of an entrepreneur, focusing primarily on upgrading the base and making a profit. Others may find themselves with the compulsion to terminate the competition by any means necessary. As this is a game about guns, our main cast of weapons starts off with a sword, because the one thing all humans have in common is stabbing each other. Man, if only I could attack with a ranged weapon. Speaking of, we have the nondescript handgun that does absolutely no damage mostly because the average Roblox man can take a 50 cal to the face without a scratch. Next, we have the Uzi, which is an alright gun, but if this gun is legal in your state you could probably get the M16, the AK-47, the AUG, and the sniper rifle, all of which are excellent guns. You can also buy health packs that restore your health for free. As an American, I am unfamiliar with this concept. Although, I don't know why I'm telling you about these guns as you're probably only going to use the alien pistol. There are also the VIP and fan member weapons, but who in the right mind would spend real money on a Roblox game. Who would even spend four hours recording a Roblox game to make a video out of it? Once you feel ready for second period in an American high school, it's time to start blasting, but only until you graduate because that kind of behavior doesn't look good on a college application. 
As you build your wealth from harvesting the seemingly infinite amounts of materials, your base ends up expanding in the process. You add a second floor, a canopy, a third floor, a beach episode, and a roof, all of which houses the immense processing power of an Intel Pentium Core 2 Duo. It seems that wherever we can fit a conveyor, we can also fit a drill, and a purifier, and a refinery, and a larger drill to go with an even larger refinery. By the time we're done with this game, the planet will be so hollow and empty that it can act as a model of my comment section. However, all of this progress doesn't come without a cost. You may notice that there is a sudden deficit between the amount of money you're making and the amount of money it now costs to pay for better upgrades. Your Bitcoin mining station isn't even making a profit. I guess inflation hit every currency, even Robux. There are two ways to pay off debt, the boring way or the fun way. Now, you could sit around and wait for compound interest to take effect, that is if you want to experience the heat death of the universe, or we could turn to our friend Saul Goodman, who teaches us how to avoid paying taxes like I avoid taking my medication. Uh, hello? Yeah, the shares? Sell them all. And it is at this point of the game where you and your partner will see amounts of money that you cannot pronounce the names of. It is important to note that Robux can't pay off student loans, no matter the amount. Look man, finding infinite money glitches is not exclusive to video games. People do that in real life all the time. With your newfound riches, you decide to invest into an energy source capable of creating portals to new dimensions. Wait, this is still not portal! You harness this power to open a portal at the first floor of the base, which you hesitantly step through, and are transported to billionaire playboy philanthropist tax evader island. Finally! Now I know what rich people do in their free time. Break the law. I mean... Break the laws of physics. It is here on this island where we are greeted by a stranger who awards us with a badge for completing the game, which is strange because we haven't spawn camped anyone yet. Next, we are presented with a selection of ancient Roblox technology, the paths. Similar to how the entirety of Eastern Europe runs on the Source engine allowing people to be hop everywhere, Roblox has some features of its game engine that we can take advantage of to create new types of movement, one of which are the paths, a remnant of technology from a time when the oof sound was still in the game. Paths are arguably one of the best parts of this game, as they allow you to walk on a hard light platform that forms wherever you step, effectively letting you fly through the air. With the piece of Roblox history in your inventory, you make your way back to the main island, inundated with a new perspective. The strange man told you that you finished the game, so you're left wondering why you're still playing. One of the reasons you're still playing is because you're now equipped to partake in the culture of every Roblox tycoon in existence. Spawn killing, going to war for no reason, bombing a children's hospital. These are staple activities that we, as Roblox veterans, must participate in as a celebration of the wonders of multiplayer. Along with the paths, there are other various items that you will need for the endgame progression. My favorite of which is the airstrike, which rains down millions of taxpayer dollars of damage on any poor soul unfortunate enough to be the victim of one. Can't you tell this is the fun part of the game? Where your factory is near completion and you have no more incentive to gather money as you can now supply yourself with ICBMs whenever you feel slightly irritated. You may notice that other bases have also been getting pretty stacked, and it is our job to stop that. Now you may have problems getting into enemy territory, but fear not, because airstrikes have no problems crossing state lines. Some players may attempt to fight back as you have no doubt angered them at this point with your endless airstrikes. For the most part, you don't really have to worry about the consequences of your actions. However, if any of the players have VIP or fan in their name, run. At this stage of the game, there really isn't much left to do, as you've pretty much unlocked everything and discovered all there is to know. Perhaps this is why players resort to spawn camping, as it is the only source of renewable entertainment. Most players will probably come to realize that this tycoon was never about the guns, or the conflict, or the planetary amounts of wealth, but rather, it was about the journey that you went on. Taking a look back at your base, you think about how far you've come, and how much Roblox as a platform has progressed since this game came out. You see that while you and the world around you has changed, this game has pretty much remained the same. After some reflection, you do what every tycoon player has done at some point, and log out. But not before the outro song. So guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. It's the summer of 2014. You and the boys are on summer vacation. You're at a friend's house. You turn to your buddy and say, Hey, wanna play some two-player gun factory? And he says, sure. You ask your other friend, and he asks his brother, who all say yes. You guys all join a game, and start a base battle with some of the people on the server. You're having fun, and you decide to have a moment to take it all in. You take a look over at your blue iPhone 5C, which I still have by the way, but not to check the time. You didn't pay much attention to it back then. You just wanted to change the music. 
The sun was setting, the EDM was playing in the background, the laptops were charged and overheating, the vibes were perfect, and a core memory was being made. You didn't know it back then, but you were experiencing some of the best times you'd ever have. You wish you could go back to that time, but you can't. Some time passes, you all grow apart, and go your separate ways. Nearly a decade later, you decide to start a YouTube channel to capitalize on your childhood dream of being a YouTuber because the thought of being a normal person scares you. One day, you decide to make a video about that game in an attempt to capture the nostalgia, putting your very inspired comedic spin on it. Did you succeed? Did you really convey your own experience to other people? Will this bring those times back? Well, no point dwelling on it now. But where old memories end, new ones begin. Ain't that right, partner? Bro, is that a real rocket launcher?